Architecture has rarely been driven by architecture matters. Power, religion, superstition have always been the forces who shaped the architecture. These last 35 years, these forces shift and leave less and less space for architects. How architects can navigate through these forces? How architects can find solutions to create new structure that able to address this context? I would like to do this hypothesis of architecture is context. Actually, imagine that architecture is not anymore this rigid structure, but an organism that can absorb the local conditions, the different contexts, and use this energy and these forces to create new typology, new spaces, new experience. In this approach, I would like to do this hypothesis of architecture is context. It's the great context. Context as a source of inspiration of the base of the project of architecture. I will go through three different projects, three different countries, three different programs, three different scales, to show how it's possible to use the context as the main source of inspiration. And I will start in Singapore with a massive uh, housing development of 2,000 units in Pungol. Pungol is a new town in Singapore, the 25th new town in Singapore. It's a reclaimed land, 40 minutes from the uh, city. As you can see, <coughs> it's a, a, a new development from scratch, but actually the context is there. There is a new canal, artificial canal that have been done, and we have to do this first development. We need to go back to the context, the political context of Singapore. What is public housing? Public housing is the core of the nation for Singapore. Lee Kuan Yew in 1965 declared the first uh, campaign will be a roof for each Singaporean. And this is the start of the public housing in Singapore in 1965. This project that we have to do is for the 50th anniversary of the independence of Singapore. The political context and the historical context is even more important than everything. 1965, they started amassing housing development with rationality and modernism as main language of this new campaign. The rationality, you can see it on the facade. This white stripe become the identity of the new public housing in Singapore. Even, even though it will be displayed on the, on the build. You can see, you can recognize the rationality of the modernism, the white stripe. This is the pride of the nation in 1965 for Singapore. Even more, you can see in this late map, 1970, of a sightseeing of Singapore, you see people, public housing display on it. I will be very surprised to see public housing display on sightseeing map of Switzerland. Actually, this is to see and to understand what is the importance of the public housing in Singapore. And what is, for us, the alternative? How we can give the new generation of public housing in Singapore, in the same time, paying tribute of what has been done during 50 years. And what is the alternative of these blocks with between blocks? Actually, we look at something that is more hybrid. Hybrid in the fact that Pungol is not in the city. Of course, it's not in the nature, but is in between. So we thought about mixing urban fabrics and landscape and create uh, hybrid buildings that can generate new form, a new massing that adapt to the different conditions. These buildings, it's a dense development with 2,000 units, 
and how with hexagonal shape and terracing, we are able to combine new view, new experiences, and how with the old ideas of the white ribbon and this pagoda, which exp exprim very clearly these ideas of the roof, which is actually a very basic feature of tropical architecture, meaning protection against sun, protection against rain. And these two references uh, help us to develop our facade that actually pay tribute to the history of the public housing, but at the same time become sun shading, a sustainable feature that can be adapted, can be changed into Juliet balconies to enhance the relation between inside and outside. The building change form, change perception depending where you are. This building, this organism actually adapt to the different context. When you look at the, the canal, you open and create open courtyard. It change also height to create terraces and to bring again new experiences for the inhabitant. The courtyard become also a landscape feature with the parking, ventilate, uh, natural ventilate and natural lighted. And you can see how the different wings of the buildings change depending the situation and the view. The scale reduced close to the canal to adapt to the promenade and the scale of human. This project has been <coughs> successfully completely two years ago. And recently, it has been displayed in the new $50 bills of Singapore for the 50th anniversary. In a way, this project has been absorbed by the history of Singapore, or the architecture has absorbed the context of the history of Singapore. Next project is Itech Park in Walak, Vietnam. This project is a project that we start 10 years ago in Vietnam, and it will actually locate it in a very close site of Hanoi, 40 kilometers, with a lot of greenery, a lot of specific uh, location, where you can see the map here between Hanoi and Wallach. We have also a site with a lot of hills, and a lot of water feature, actually. This is what we found when we start to do this master plan. Actually, it was a high-tech park. The program was a high-tech park. And we can see that what we discover is the master plan plan up to now, up to that day, was obviously towers and street between towers. Nothing to do with this specific city of the Wallach location. Our site actually is just right here in the middle of a, a lake, of a water feature here. And we can see that there is no adaptation, no cares about the local condition of this area. We decide rather to do towers, to do horizontal densification, and to create seven villages around the central park. All villages are almost 3,000 to 8,000 people gather in one block, going different height and creating courtyard. These ideas of villages come, of course, from the old tradition and the way that the, the peoples are living outside of Hanoi. Create horizontal densification where people can, can, can work, play, learn. You, you're far from Hanoi. You have to think ab not only about office, but you, you think about how this organism can live. The different height, the different courtyard become the main space, social space of the buildings with natural ventilation and uh, for the car park, semi senken And the courtyard open to different perceptions, different landscape. You can see the facade, we use shelters, to protect, again, the sun. The sustainability is always included in our project and how we can absorb the different orientation. 
Even inside the building, we ensure this courtyard to bring natural light inside office space. How the buildings adapt to the different contexts here facing the lake with a green facade. And we have in between villages create landscape facilities. Organism merge into the landscape, even not existing with a fifth facade full of green, where there is relation, strong relation between outside and inside. We encourage at uh, that way the people to go in and to go out again. So there is a relation and you enjoy outdoor activities as well. These villages create a, a new environment for people to find another way to work outside of Hanoi, but also a way for them to find a new narrative for their life outside Hanoi. I will finish with a very small project of birdcage in Switzerland. This is a very natural environment too, close to the river, but inside the city. And actually, our commission was to create a birdcage of 10 meter height in a natural environment. We were very, very afraid, worried about destroying this natural environment. You can imagine that a large volume, like I, I showcase now, can damage the natural condition of the site. So we decided to do a non-building. Meaning that we found a small location in between trees and we create our footprint according to the contour of the trees. We decide that the structure comes directly from the trees, steel trees actually. The colors of the structure adapt to dif different color of the site according to the season of course. And we create a structure of 17 steel trees, all unique, a new home for the bird, who should be protect for a virus flu, with a slab of eight centimeter, will be the support of a net, inox net, almost transparent, that create a non-building, a non-facade. You can see that the buildings disappear almost. And you see how he start to talk, to dialogue with the context, the different colors. We create, we create a path through this uh, cage to keep the, the, the porosity of the site. And finally, this last image that I like a lot because the, the boundary between architecture and context is blur, almost non-exist. You can barely see what is architecture and what is the context, this natural context for this project. And actually, I will say that architecture should exceed the, the, the built environment and architecture should rather talk about those forces, these existing forces that exist in any context. And actually, we as architects should be the generator of a new narrative for the people here for the bird who's living in. Thank you very much.